My guest today fascinates me because I'm always fascinated by comedians that start doing it super young. He began, as far as I'm aware, at the age of 15. I mean, to be getting on a stage at 15 and saying I'm a comedian strikes me as quite interesting. I, I, I couldn't have done it. And, and, and since then, and he's still a young man, he's done, I worked it out, more tours than me. And that feels, that feels wrong. It either means he's great or I'm lazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ahir Shah. Hello. Hey, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. We're, we're at uh, we're on the banks of the river at Hampton Court. It's a place that you visited as a small child. Yeah, it's a place that I visited uh, as a kid. I remember sort of parents, grandparents, sister, and everything doing the this just, you know one of the places that you go to see the the grand history of England yeah. uh, and yeah, my, my first time since and you know and, and here I am now sat opposite the grand history of Wales. It's, uh, well, that's it's, that's nice. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a compliment so early, unless you were being cynical. No, I wanted it. I, wa I wanted it to be taken as a compliment. I thought of it, and I'm like, I'm going to bust it out. Is he going to take this as an insult? And I'm glad that it's opened okay, and we haven't started hostile. <laughs> well, I mean, Hampton Court. We're at the Mitre Hotel, which is looks over at Hampton Court, which celebrates commemorates the life of Henry VIII. Mm whose behavior was, <laughs> you know, was always dodgy. But now, in 2022, <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. I think he'd be cancelled mm, now. Mm. Like, I've got, you know, I've, I've got a few friends who've gotten divorced. Mm -hmm. And that's been quite difficult mm. uh, getting through for them. But uh, I'm really happy to say no beheadings mm. of spouses, at least in my friendship circle. Yeah. And I think that that's a real mark of how far we've come. <laughs> far we've come. <laughs> Spoken like a true millennial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, me being the older man, there's something I secretly respect <laughs> about Henry. He didn't take any rubber, you know. He, he, he just... <laughs> Are you going to divorce me? That's it. Love you. It's your, your your decision. Was it ever the Was it ever the wives' decisions, or was it? I, it wouldn't have been, would it? No, well, it's certainly. I don't mean the beheading. I mean, the, yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. the divorce. I think that uh, no, the divorce. That what? So who who got divorced? So Catherine of Aragon divorced. Mm, good man. I don't know. Right, and that was his desire for a male heir, and she was older, I believe. Um, wow. Then. You've beheaded. set yourself quite a challenge here. You're going to have to right. go through all of them. Beheaded, Anne Boleyn. I've seen the musical Six. So right. this, is a, this is something. Uh, Anne Boleyn beheaded. She definitely wasn't up for that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think... She, like, she didn't enter into the business being like, mm -hmm. this is... Mm -hmm. I'm up for a beheading. Um, died... Are we at... Was it Jane Seymour? Three? And then Anne of Cleves... Four divorced, mm. and that was annulled because mm. uh, that was the whole thing about her portrait. What like he thought she was super fit from her portrait. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And well, that's, that's that's very modern, isn't it? I mean, that's <laughs> that's the equivalent of a filter on Tinder <laughs> yeah. or, or Instagram or just the best photo of you. Yeah. Have you finished the wives? Uh, no. And th then there's D Catherine Parr. Catherine Parr. And th no, then I'm yeah. Well, I mean, look, I'm impressed. I, I couldn't have done any of those. You must have thought, we're doing this interview in Hampton Court. I bet he's going to ask me to <laughs> list. I should, have, I should have boned up on the wives. This is a... Like Henry did. <laughs> boned up. Boned up on the wives. <laughs> look, we're talking. Thanks for coming here. It's really nice to, 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 to meet you. Uh, tell me we haven't met before, have we? No, we haven't. Thank God. Oh. Do you want to know something awful? I thought you thought I was Anton Dubeck. I thought that we had met before. When? And then I realised that I was thinking of when I met Harry Enfield. We all look <laughs> yeah. the same. Oh. Bright at Enfield, similar number of syllables in the surname, everything. Clean shaven. Oh, I hey, listen, Harry is uh, Harry is a god. If you don't want to be mistaken for anyone, I mean, it's it's a step up from Anton Dubeck. I'll, I'll, <laughs> 
I'll just say that. I, I saw a thing with you where you said, because of your age, 32 now? 31. 31, 31. You've now been doing stand-up for more of your life than you weren't <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, yeah. stand-up. Because yeah. you started at 15. First gig was when I was 15, yes. Did your dad suggest stand-up? Is that true? Yes, it was. That's I've never heard of that before. <laughs> How did that come about? Uh, so I think that both both he and my mum were really, really brilliant. On So my mum is retired now, but was a primary school teacher. Mm-hmm. And like I went to the primary school where uh, she taught. And both of them, because there wasn't much money around, but they were very concerned with the importance of education and whatnot, would try everything that they could in terms of like stuff that we could direct ourselves or what have you in order to get us involved in like any sort of extracurricular thing that might take our fancy or might interest us. And how did you respond uh, to that? Yeah, Occasionally uh, with annoyance because I was like, no, I just want to, I want to stay in. Uh, I was like, but uh, like, no, we're, go- we're going to the museum, come on. <laughs> uh, but, um, and so uh, one of the things that, because they knew that I liked uh, doing drama at school yeah. and that sort of thing and liked watching comedy on the telly and particularly, but so I was born in 1990 and so... Uh, around the millennium and stuff uh, when Goodness Gracious Me came out yeah. and it would be a big thing uh, every, like me and my sister my mum, my dad and my uh, mum's parents my grandparents would all watch it uh, together and have for the first time a sort of like oh wow this is a thing that we can do yeah, uh, yeah. right and uh, that's why I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it's uh, you know much easier to be able to be something when it's something you can see yeah. um, right? and why that representation is so important. And Dad was like, well, all right. He loved watching that and we all loved quoting that. And he asked to watch Have I Got News For You every week since he was a little kid. Like, that's been the nice thing that he's really liked to watch. So why don't you should give that a go? Like, give give doing comedy a go. Uh, and I think that it's, it's just that sort of age where you're so much less encumbered by... Like, it, in certain things you are obviously like extraordinarily encumbered by what do people think of me at school, what do people think of me in a social circle and everything. But if fundamentally you're in the upstairs back room of a pub, uh, like just before the smoking ban, and it's just like <laughs> like vaguely seeing a haze of 20-somethings <laughs> through a wall of smoke, it's like, well, not, what these people think of me doesn't really matter, right? It's like, I'm not going to encounter any of them. It, it, it was just like a bit of a fun hobby uh, mm. that, that I enjoyed doing. And then... Yeah, over over time, caught the bug for it. I watched you say, because I love voices, I do voices, I'm interested, I have an ear for voices, and I heard you say, maybe at the Apollo or somewhere, you said, I have a voice, what was the lovely line, a voice that makes it sound like I've colonised... Yeah, I, I realise that I sound as though I've been colonised by my own voice. Lovely line, mm. lovely line. Where's the voice come from? The voice sounds like you went to boarding school in the, in the English countryside. And I did not, I went to... My local comp, which is the same yeah. school that my mum went to. But you've, you've so ended up with something on the outskirts of Hugh Grant. With, <laughs> yeah, uh... Yeah. Uh, so uh, part of it um, was that, and this is actually the case, with, it, it's not entirely uncommon, particularly in uh, the British Indian community. So my granddad, when they came over, he told my mum and my uncle and aunt that when they were outside of the house, uh, they shouldn't speak Gujarati. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, like, but they should try and speak like like English people and the proper, yes. like, receive pronunciation, and that that would be good for integration. Yes, uh, yes. Right, so what started off as, like, affectation for them to try and to fit almost in. fit into mm-hmm. a society that was far more difficult to fit into uh, than it is now. And God knows there are still problems now, but by God, I wouldn't want to have been yeah. the 12-year-old that my mother was when she came over here and everything that mm. she had to go through. Um, and so it started like that and then got passed down, essentially, and that, that's, what, uh, that's what ends up happening. And so I was always like, even at school... Uh, I remember we did um, we did Shirley Valentine in English, uh, and there was a mention. Is that on the syllabus? It, it was. It was in the mid nineties. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, isn't it? <laughs> <I imagine. laughs> um, and that because uh, one of the characters talks about elocution lessons, and so everyone was like, "Oh, I hear, I hear probably has elocution lessons or whatever." That was. A, I spoke sort of oddly at my school as well, and then I think it sort of just got a bit more. Uh, university, because there were a lot more people who sound like this. Where did you go to uni? At Cambridge. 
Oh, wait a minute. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're talking to a pretty smart guy. He covers it well, but a pretty smart guy. <laughs> So what I just, did you I just I just rocked up at the interview and started listing wives of Henry VIII. Yeah. <laughs> like, so this whole thing gonna... about knowing Anne Boleyn, of course he does. <laughs> um, you're at university. You be you were doing gigs before you went to uni, mm. and I I know this. I'll ask it, but I know the answer. Were you doing them while you were at uni? Yes. So mm. uh, at university, and like it's really nice that like uh, a lot of friends who uh, I was doing comedy with at uni. Uh, sort of have continued. So, um, were you in the footlights? Was in the footlights. Of course, and you like, were. Who was so, in it with you? So, Phil Wang was yeah. the, the year above me yeah. uh, at uni and was present then. Uh, and then, like around the same time, like the guys who are in the pin. Uh, oh yes, I've, I've, I've been in one of their shows in mm. the West End. Ah, uh, yeah, you're in uh, in the comeback. Yes. Ah, uh, very fun. Very nice chaps. Uh, very funny yeah. show. And then like uh, Emma City, who's a mm. uh, actor's in Starstruck, uh, and mm. uh, sort of yeah, a bunch of uh, George Foreckers, who I most recently saw be Hamlet. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Sure. All these Jason bright Forbes. young things around you. So when did you graduate? What year? 2012. 2012. Mm. What? Ten years ago. Yeah. God, you've done a lot, haven't you? God. It's, uh, sorry, the answer that's, that's is just, yes. It's just dawned on me that it's been a full decade. Dawned on me that it's been a full decade. But it's because, like, in my, do you still have the thing where I'm still like, last year was 2019? Just because no, of everything really. that's happened. Has no, it, I'm, right. I'm an adult male. <laughs> no, I still, I still sort of feel like the. No, I'm, like, I'm up. I'm up with the calendar. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> that just the just the pause in everything. But you say yeah. you saying a decade. Mm. You're seeing a decade as a substantial period of time. I'm seeing a decade as an insubstantial period of time. Right. And I'm saying you've achieved a lot in ten years. I mean, you've done several tours, each new and and different, mm. brand new ideas and things. You, you've gone round the world. I mean, you, you've done a lot. It's nice. Thanks, man. <laughs> so tour, tour, tour around the world. What, what do you want? Do you have an ideal of where you want to be? See, somebody my age, I just want to keep doing the same thing now. and eh, fine. I don't have any big goals. But do you yeah. still have things that you've not achieved that you want to achieve? Maybe a bit of it has been a function of just COVID changing everyone's perspective uh, mm -hmm. on everything. But I feel as though the, like, radius of my ambition has shrunk much quicker than I expected it to. Good name for a tour, the radius of my ambition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that would be, hang on to that. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would catch my eye. I, was like, oh, I don't go any further than like Wickham or somewhere. Well, no, but it could be a big, I mean, yeah. the radius could be the globe, couldn't yeah. it? It doesn't have to be high Wickham, like, I think yeah. you gave as your example. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was young, there was all sorts that, was like, I, I wouldn't be like, capital B, the best, well, you're not going to be capital B, the best comedian because Richard Pryor lived and died. But for example, like I, uh, I got engaged towards the end of last year. My sister had her first baby this morning. Yes. Uh, and everything. So I don't know whether it's just because I'm in that frame of mind at the moment. Yeah. Uh, was the baby expected this morning or was it a surprise? No, it was a surprise. Well, uh, early? Not, well, not, not, early? not super, not super early. But uh, early enough for it to be a surprise. Early, yes. And you uh, were woken this morning, your phone goes off. Yeah. And they say, guess what's happened? Half six. The, P.S. There's a new thing that you love. Wow. <laughs> Half six phone call. Nobody wants that. Not really, because, yeah, it's the only people who ring me, really, are my parents. And so I always assume that something's wrong. The um, only people that ring me are my parents. Yeah. Just like to do phone calls. Well, who else? Well, oh, because everybody else texts you or WhatsApps you. Yeah. You youngster. Wow, wow. <laughs> you can honestly say that. Yeah. It's only your parents that want to physically talk with you on the phone. Yeah. And you're looking at me like I'm an idiot. You're looking at me like there's something wrong with me. No, it's you. There's something wrong with you. And you don't realise it. Honestly, no, none of your friends call you for a chat. No, we, well, we'll see each other. In my circle of friends, like, there aren't, well, there are a couple of people who have kids, but by and large... We're still, by and large, like, still very happy. <laughs> by and large, we're still sort of childless and all living relatively near one another. Yeah. So, if you wanted to have a catch up with someone, you just hang out with them of an evening. Maybe, maybe when like kids start happening and whatnot, then that's when the maybe that's what makes phone calls happen. I'm Rob Bryden. You've been watching the Generation Gap. Well, <laughs> next week I'll be talking to a six-year-old girl who tells me why <laughs> ponies play such an important part in her life. <laughs>
Well, uh, I've enjoyed this. <laughs> Have you enjoyed it? I've enjoyed it tremendously. It's, for you, it's been a bit like coming to a care home, <laughs> hasn't it? No, it's been lovely. It's been it's been where where the residents are in better physical shape than than you were expecting, but mentally yeah, yeah. you can see the decline. It's been so lovely. Thanks very much. Why don't you now? Take the time and have a little revisit, reacquaint yourself with Hampton Court Palace. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice day yeah. today. You could do that, couldn't you? Would, yes. Yeah. Ah, here. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Rob. You hear that? He said it was his pleasure. He's enjoyed it. I've connected. Goodbye. <laughs>